Up next, the backstage doors have been prized open. Sunday takes you behind the scenes at the world of wearable art. Every day there's something new on to keep me loving you. Every day there's something new to keep me loving you. It's the cultural equivalent of the Rugby World Cup. Started with a couple of hundred people under a marquee in a backyard in Nelson. An old stereo, borrowed smoke machine and a bath full of beers. Now it's a multi-million dollar international production that attracts the best from around the world. It's WOW, the world of wearable art. Pete Cronshaw goes backstage. <laughs> Welcome to WOW, beautiful, bold, bizarre. It is a mutant mix of fashion, art, and the totally unexpected. Turn your wrists around a little bit. Widen your stance a little. A quarter of a century ago, Susie Moncrief had a vision of sorts. She dreamed of getting art off the walls and onto the catwalk. I've always thought if you can celebrate beauty contests and, and sport on a world scale, why not art and culture? That's good, Martin. That's good. That's good. I was determined that it would work, and I knew it would work. Are you living the dream? I certainly am. Yeah. Can you all hear me? Just to let you know that the, the judges that are uh, judging, not you, but the garments, are Trelise Cooper, Richard Taylor, Nigel Brown, and Susie. This year, the backstage doors have been opened. For a sneak behind the scenes peek of this art meets fashion extravaganza. Oh, well done, you survived. With a massive cast and huge sellout crowds, WOW is a national success story, but it wasn't always like this. From her humble backyard beginnings 23 years ago, Susie's dream has well and truly been realised. Do you miss the old days? Well, I do to some degree in that, um, you know, it was reasonably haphazard in those days. We had a catwalk that went out into the garden and a couple of flashing lights, a smoke machine and someone's borrowed stereo. And, <laughs> and we thought it was the greatest to show on earth, even then. <laughs> From the outskirts of Nelson to the capital, from 200 people to almost 50,000 annually, WOW has rocketed into another stratosphere altogether. After a year of planning and weeks of intensive rehearsals, we're behind the scenes with just four days until opening night. Dance to my king guitar. Can that help me up? <laughs> John Rolls is a newbie to the wearable scene. I might talk to him because if he sits in the audience, he might be a bit overwhelmed because you sit there and you think, oh, this is marvellous. And then you think, oh my God, I'm on. A dedicated follower of fashion, Jeanette McDonald has always been the consummate professional. The lazy performer's beauty routine. Rush in, stick that on. Well, hello, good to go. No. Cast and crew total more than 400. <laughs> How do you see out of that? I see through this little hole here. It's going to be a little hazardous. It's fine. Gotcha. <laughs> so is your head tail too long, Lucy? I can't feel it doing anything. I've got it. It's not really in the way. We have bunnies over here, have you? Have you ever interviewed someone? No. OK, take that. Go, go interview some of your mates. OK. Go on. Putting a bunny in charge of a television microphone might seem a little risky. 
I can interview one of you. Oh, babe, I'm Robin and I'm awesome. But rabbits do talk more freely when they're amongst their mates. These get wedgies. They're very oh. sore. So what do you guys think of the Shirley Temples, the girls? The Shirley Temples. They annoy us on the stage and they're really loud as well. They're cute in the outside but the main in the inside. They're, de they're little devils. I'm <laughs> telling you, they are the devils. Red hair maybe, but with their ringlets, pink blush and pink lace, are they really devils? Not at all, according to the Shirley Temples. Are you guys the cutest? Yeah, oh, yeah. by far. Yeah, totally. Yeah, but the rabbits reckon they're cuter. Oh my god! Oh my god. They're so dirty yeah, and they're smelly! And they're just like, how can they be? The I best? mean, they've even got <laughs> fake dirt <dirt> over themselves. <laughs> Kids and animals do have the cute factor, but here it's the wearable art that always takes centre stage. Each outfit is a masterpiece. I find them a total inspiration. I always have done, actually. I mean, they're just absolutely, exquisitely made. I'm astounded every year at how Incredible the entries are that come in, you know, every year you think how much better can it get, but it just keeps getting better. I'm completely inspired. Is that sales pitch or is that the sculptor within talking? It's the sculptor within, yeah. And like I say, wearable art is my big sculpture. I'm the chef, there's a baker, Hello. and the butcher. That's right. And we are cooking up a feast of visual delight for you. In years gone by, this has always been a creative platform for crazy Kiwi creations. From Paraparaumu, Todong, and Nelson. If it weren't for your gumboots, where would you be? But this year, 30% of the 273 entries have come from overseas designers. This one from India. This one from the United States. And this one from the Netherlands. And this year's supreme winner, the $25,000 prize package from British designer Mary Wing Tu. It's pretty unique and it's worth coming halfway across the side of the world for. It kind of like gives me energy to create something very special and unique apart from the work that I normally do. The inspiration for Mary's creation comes from her full-time job. She just so happens to be the Queen Sadler. You're a Queen Sadler? Yes. Well, I'm kind of in both fortes. I work within the fashion industry and I make the harness for the Queen's horses. So it's kind of quite different. Kind of yeah. different. <laughs> and what does Queenie make of all this? Um, they're very supportive at the Royal Muse. Um, they know my background, they know what I'm doing and they know that I'm in New Zealand now um, and in the competition. I think they'll be quite excited to find out how I've done. <laughs> at this event, the models can't simply flounce along the catwalk. How do you see out of that thing? Not easily, but I'm actually looking out the nostrils at you. Oh, straight down. Oh, there you go. There I am. How are you going to get on the stage with that thing? I basically, I follow tiny, tiny little dotted lines on, on the stage that gets me to A to B. Is it scary? It is a little more exciting. Because you're... You never know when you're going to step off the stage. Negotiating any stage in outfits like these ones can be more than a little difficult, but that's all part of the attraction for these models. I have to dance in gumboots, mate. That can't be easy. <laughs> no, it's not. It's tough work. <laughs> is the yes. bride happy on the stage? Yes, yes, the bride was very happy on the stage. <laughs> hand cramp, hand knee cramp. When I first saw it, I thought, oh, that might be difficult. But it's so comfortable and it's really easy to wear. As clothing, it looks uncomfortable and dysfunctional. But as art, it's innovative, creative and simply stunning. A lot of it maybe not quite so comfortable, but, but it's art, it's art. The whole right, thing right. is art off the wall and onto the model, so... <laughs> How is that art? How is that art? Oh, icons, it's all part of it. Kiwiana. Just spectacular. But is New Zealand too small for such a big occasion? Are we going to lose WOW offshore? There's a postscript to this story.
And that's the vision I've, I've had. I'd like to see it go global. So watch the space. <laughs> watch the space, yeah. <laughs> It's a Kiwi success story from the humble backyard beginning at Susie's place to a national extravaganza. But has wow outgrown Aotearoa? After 23 years of wow, Susie Moncrief is still clutching the coattails of a runway success. I'm very proud that it's grown to this size and everyone's very passionate. But she's adamant this show is a long way from outgrowing its wearable boots and it's only a matter of time before it heads overseas. It's been an incredible journey and it's not one that I could ever walk away from. I love it. I've always seen the worldwide wearable art awards in my head somewhere for a long, for many years actually. And I mean that's the vision I've, I've had. I'd like to see it go global. Um, and you know we are working on maybe that happening in the not too distant future. Where in the world do you see it going? Well, I can see it everywhere. I can see it in Australia, I can see it in the UK, I can see it in Canada. Um, in fact, I can see it everywhere. But I think, you know, New Zealand would always be the birthplace of WOW. We can't keep it here forever, can we? Yes, we can. We can? <laughs> Absolutely. How do you keep it here? and take it offshore? Um, that's a secret. <laughs> Watch the space. Watch the space, yeah. <laughs>